Hello everybody, it's -a me, Unfriendly Porcupine, and today I'm reviewing the X-Block SWAT Troops 2.0. This is the updated version of the SWAT Troops. If you haven't seen the previous one, which I highly recommend that you do, because it will make more sense in this review, go check it out. The link will be in the description, and the link will also be in that YouTube caption thing up there. It also makes more sense if you watch the old one and then watch this one to compare how far they have came or some new things that they have hooked up from the previous one. It's going to be exciting regardless with all of that out of the way my comrades. Let this review begin. Also, do you remember those guns and accessories that came in trays? I don't know what these things are called, ammo racket trays, but that's exactly what actually came here. And of course, here's what one looks like before you open. And don't worry, I'll show off all the instructions towards the end. I guess I'll save the figures for later, let's go ahead and talk about the accessories that you get. First things first, we have this barbed wire piece. Now what's different from this barbed wire piece as to the previous one is of course, it's a lighter metal color, but also it is a lot more stretchy and it's a lot more higher quality. Just look at this. It can stretch very nicely. And it doesn't feel like it's gonna snap. Of course, don't be crazy on friendly porcupine Stretch it so damn far that it is no longer useful. Oh boy. <laughs> well anyways, let's look at the up close detail. It's essentially the same mold over here. A different color, but like I can tell it's a lot more higher quality and this can legit compete with Mega Construct. So if you're wondering, oh man, I wish I could get these barbed wire pieces again. Well this set can satisfy all your needs. It's also just very nice and very stretchy. Feels like I'm playing that instrument I always forget the name of. Yeah, that really feels like it's very fun. Also, and just look at the relapse. Oh my gosh, why are these words? Anyways, look at the relapse. That just kind of gives you an idea of the material. Mm -hmm. Very nice, very stretchy, also nicely folded. So if you want to do something like that, like a swingy swing, you can, you can do that. Very well done. And on top of that, you also get a second one. Now you can see, here's the difference. Once you've been playing it around, stretching it around, that's what it looks, a lot more loose. Then you look at this one, it's a lot more tight. It needs to be stretched out a bit more. And then once it's stretched out, it's almost about the same equivalent as that. Well, means of course a little bit more stretching, but here gives you kind of an idea. And there it is, it's done. All right, moving on to the next one. My favorite. The care package! Da, 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 da. The care package! Of course, the care package Lord and Friendly Pork is fine. <laughs> Let's talk about the care packages. And what I like about the set is you get two. What are the differences from the previous one? Actually, not much. Same color, just two more care packages to enjoy. And just because I'm a Friendly Pork is fine, I'm gonna grab this stud right here, and we're gonna test it out, see how it sticks on Kazi. Ooh. Well, it sticks, it sticks. Yeah, it actually sticks pretty well. Whoa, well, that is tight. <laughs> uh, the care package lid opens up very nicely. It is tight, it will not fall off. None of your accessories will go out, but if you need to pull it out, it's very nice and easy to loose. See that? Very easy to open back up. All right, now to remove it, it also removes pretty well. Yeah, so the studs work, just uh, make sure you press a little bit and it properly aligns. It's not like an easy click and whoa, it doesn't like that. You have to actually align the studs, wiggle, and then it's on. But there is no problem with this at all. And of course, because I'm a friendly porcupine, I must go into the detail. Let's see how the grip works here. Uh, doesn't look like you would grip properly. Maybe it has to be gripped from the underside. Just gonna remove the whole arm and then attach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on, come on, little fella, da, da, da. Well, yeah, that's the, yeah, Mega's version is not, I'm also trying to grip it, but not snap the arm. Thankfully, these are knockoffs, and they don't have that issue. Yeah, I'm basically not gonna, you gotta grab it. Because if I push too hard, I might literally just snap off the hands and fingers and... Yeah, that won't be fun, so I'm not gonna test that feature out, but... Uh, I would, I'm gonna pass it as it doesn't work, but... 
if you got it to work somehow, let me know for the knockout version of this Of course, we already know the official Mega One works. And of course, just for those who are curious, this is what's inside. You get an extra rope, which you can just easily slide out. So, not the most brightest idea to put those in there. But yeah, you basically get these pieces, which are the arm pieces used to attach. So, if you somehow lost these pieces, they the crucial piece to make the figure happen, you have a lot more. You're gonna put these into the, your extra accessories and figure parts bag. Oh, and of course, stackable, very nice. I love these very much. Moving on to the next accessory, the sandbaggy. Cause not only am I a care package lord, I love the sandbaggy lord. <laughs> all right. Well, that right there, you can see all of the nice, excellent texture they put into the sandbaggies. These ones, mwah, very excellent. I love sandbaggies. On the previous one, if you remember, it was just smooth tile. So it's actually kind of nice to get a textured one. Although I like both because the smooth one's like a pillow, but this one's like a true sandbag. You can also, you can pretend and use it, you know, stuff it with rice. It's a rice bag or something. But yeah, let's go ahead and bring out our stud again and test out how it functions. Oh well, look, Mega Blocks, Kobe, and Kazi. So we get different types of flavors to try it out. Mm-hmm. Whoa, damn. That attaches very well. It's also very tight too. Damn. I was surprised at how easy that attached. Very good quality. Yeah. Ho oh, ho, much more better. Much, much more better. Just this part gets annoying, but that's because of the shape and not so much of the stud alignment. Come on, there it is. But that kind of gives you an idea. And yeah, this function well. This is a very good sandbag. Kind of see how that attaches on the other side. Attaches very well there. Yeah, I'd say this is like 95% accurate to how well Mega Bloxes sandbags. It's like that close. <laughs> they have definitely improved their sandbags. Still, Mega is slightly better, but knockoffs are very fucking close. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next one, which of course, since Mega has abandoned their orange color, because they're not under Mega Strax, these the Mega Blocks. Ay, so many name changes. Each name change. You lose fans because customers forget what you are. Anyways, yeah, this used to be the color of Mega Strax. These two orange jerry cans, they're basically about the same as the previous one. Just for those who are curious, let's test them out on stats. Do they work? And yes, they do. Yep, that functions. And let's grip to see if they actually grip. Aha, aha! They work and they function very nicely. Mm -hmm. Very well done. You also funny. You grab the you grab the jerry can and you can shake the knockoff's hand. Like good job, good job. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Nothing much changed. Moving on to the next one. <sighs> battles. These are essentially the same battles as we got last time. They stick all the same way. That's what's the inside. Whoa, man, shiny and reflective. Kind of get an idea of what it looks like on the inside. Da -da -da -da. Whoa, loose metals. And just for those who are curious, let's go ahead and attach our base plates. Uh-huh. Oh, well, that's a little bit more loose than I like it. Yeah, put it attached, and it's not gonna fall off on you. There, finally, at the smack it up. But yeah, it sticks. It does its job. Yeah, easy to remove, easy to attach. Say so that passes the friendly porcupine test. And of course, last but certainly 100% not least, this piece. This is one of my favorite pieces that comes with these sword figures. Knockoffs need to do this piece a lot more often. This super nice, high quality rope essentially mega blocks quality you can see right there you just basically tie up a little bit knot and also there's a little burn so yeah just like mega blocks does it there's also the little burn over there Ooh, feel that burn mega anyways see this part it hooks you in like that so if you try to pull in it's uh, oh that was not supposed to happen it was not supposed to go in like that uh, oh i guess i should have been playing around too damn much but Okay, I guess it's stuck that way now. <laughs> Gosh, all right, anyways. This piece right here, excellent piece. The rope material, excellent high quality. You can just see it right there. Mmm. 
I love this. Like, man, knockoffs know how to do the raw pieces and they do well. And of course, the other side is also burned. So it doesn't unravel itself. Very well done. And of course, let's say you want to hook up onto a care package. No problemo. Once it's hooked up, you can have your figures pulling. <laughs> it's fun. Also, I would imagine this would also function as well. If you can get it in there. Ah, no, it doesn't really function that well. Aha, we can hook it up over there. <laughs> and of course, we also get these raw pieces. Nothing has changed. They're still the same cheap, poor quality. Moving on to the figures. Since if you've watched the previous one, I've already gone into detail about each of the figures. I'll keep it short and brief, talk about what's new, talk about what's the problems here, talk about the material quality, etc, etc, etc. Let's begin with this figure. What's new and different about this figure? Let's start talking about the head mold. Which, if you've seen from the previous one, where did the paint application go? Oh no! Which, uh, I guess it depends on your personal preference. The knockouts do a good job. Here's what they did previously, so you can kind of get an idea. It doesn't also look that uh, pretty too. But you can also see the material of the head mold also changed. Not so super rubbery. It's a little bit more detailed in the terms of all the mold expressions are done correctly. Let me show you. This right here is the up close one. Rotate it to the side so you can get an idea. Yeah, all the molds, even though they look a little bit more blurry, if you understand what I mean, like the sharpness of each mold expression and the details and all that, it's not as sharp. Turning it around. Ah, it's definitely sharper than what the Nokos had previously done, which you can see right here. And Nokos have also previously done it pretty sharp too. I think the problem is, I think the optical illusion is being created here, is that since this is a lot more shiny and more reflective, it being a little bit more dull, I guess makes it feel like the mold itself is a lot more uh, sharper than it actually is. I mean, you tell me, what do you think? It looks a little bit sharper, but I think it's just an optical illusion. Of course, on the other side, that's what it looks like. Kind of get an idea. Shows you a bit of more of the material quality. Over here, this is how rubbery it is. It's not very rubbery, slightly, but not very rubbery. And also, that paint application, yeah. You can see it's slightly outside the margins. The color, the blue color looks like Too Faced. I mean, it works, but compared to this one, maybe you don't want a color over there. So maybe it's a good thing. Or maybe too, maybe the knuckles have ran out of this color and decided to, eh, fuck it, we don't need it no more. So maybe that's what's going on. I'm not sure. Would be great if the knuckles could actually talk to me. Maybe they could actually listen to my ideas, but we'll see how they am. I'll do it in your dreams. I guess knockoffs don't want to talk, neither does Mega. Shameful. I guess that's how Call of Duty Land dies then. Shameful, shameful, shameful. <laughs> but anyways. And of course, this one is a lot more rubbery. It's still pretty hard, but it kind of has that more rubbery texture, but this one's a lot more tighter, I guess. It's a different type of rubber for sure. And I think the whole thing what the knockoffs are trying to do is go less shiny. And overall, the rest of the figure body, which is actually the same body as they use for all the figures, it's a lot less shiner, you can just compare the difference of the blue color. Now personally, I like both, the shiny and the not shiny. But, I think this one looks a lot more released, in terms of just aesthetics on their own. Also remove the vest, but before we do that, let's go ahead and grab some official, official Mega Bloks Call of Duty pouches right here, and see how, fun how well they function on these. And uh, they function pretty well. Same on that one, pretty well as well. How about for the backpack, since we're testing on leg pouches? Uh, let's see. Also very well, yeah! Knockoffs have definitely improved on this problem with the backpack, especially with this mold. Uh-huh, very well. Yeah, yeah, I think this one's just slightly tighter than that one, but both work well. So yeah, good job, knockoffs! Something very interesting I've noticed about the backpacks is that the new ones actually have a number on them Versus the old ones did not have that number. Which is very interesting. So you see, I got 7 over here. It says 7. This one says 13. This one says 18, 19. And now it's 19, that one's 16. This one's 8. And this one's 18. So yeah, if you want to separate the new ones from the old ones, the ones that have a number are the new ones. And the ones that don't are the old ones. So yeah, they've actually updated their mold. 
Anyways, let's go ahead and take off. Oh, I, I said go ahead and I actually took off his head. <laughs> you silly porcupine. Alright, anyways, let's get this thing off. And there it is. That's what the torso looks like. So you can understand the mold difference right here. See? Having it less shine makes it feel like the mold is more expressed. Like there's more detail in it. Versus here, it's less shiny, yeah. Moving on towards the back. I think this one looks a bit better now that I look back at it. But I like both. Mm -hmm. But, however, the slight downside in terms of this mold, it feels like it's a little bit more higher quality. Uh, the arms move very smoothly and this is without any vegetable oil. Because that's what really works and makes the figures articulate well. I bet you, if I give this figure some vegetable oil for the arm joints, nah, he's gonna look, he's gonna move super smooth. That's what I did with this figure. That's why they articulate so well. And also plus, since the figures have been played around with a little bit, they're a bit more comfortable. I mean, jeez Louise, that is easy. Because these are my only figures. Now, when you compare with this figure, ah, uh, it also functions, but you see, it's not as smooth. Probably nothing uh, oil would fix, but yeah. Also functions as well, but sometimes, let me show you a figure, right here. This one, you can kind of see, that hip where it actually stretches this mold and not moving the arm. That really gets annoying. Ooh, damn it. Like, look here. Damn it. Aha. It's not that big of a deal. They have slightly improved it, but still, personally, I like the older one in that sense because there was no problem with that. Still, uh, oil will probably just fix it. So, it gets up to you. Do you want more better color aesthetic with less shine? Or do you want slightly better articulation, less rubbery? Because this rubbery kind of feels like it pulls on it a little bit. But of course, once the figures get used to it, yeah, that problem reduces. Same with the head mold. It's also a little bit more tight. Nothing that oil cannot fix. Because over here, mwah. And of course, since we're also talking about, aha, uh aha, -huh, uh -huh, let's also test out the leg strap. See, does that function well? Aha, uh -huh, and it functions well. How about this part with the belt? Mwah. Let's see how well this part functions. Oof. Oh, that is tight, Chico. Mm -mm. This one is not good. It's a little bit too tight. How about this one? See, that peg is tight. Also kind of tight. So that doesn't look like the belt mold over here. We can also take this part out. You can kind of get an idea. Uh-huh. That's what the mold looks like. The belt. Roughly about the same mold. There's no update in the belt, essentially. Ta -ta -ta. And that's how it clicks. Nice. Now, about the clicking, let's compare with the feet. Now, of course, the original one I reviewed had the black boots, but I've already swapped those out, so I can make fully black pants, so don't mind that. But yeah, in terms of the boot mold, I really wish they didn't have this annoying boot trick. I wish it was just all solid blue color. That way it's so much more easy to paint. Imagine, you can have the awesome boots on that shiny blue color. Ah, damn it, knock off. Anyways, uh, just for people who like to customize like me, really makes it a pain in the battle. But anyways, in terms of the articulation, the legs here are way much more better. The problem with these is it really looks like, like look, why did it get so close? Here you see, doesn't have that problem like this one does. You just kind of see that the legs are just closer themselves. Why does that need to be? Well actually, let's remove the leg strap so it can really be fair. Uh, also since you see it's a bit rubbery, it's slightly harder to remove. Leg strap, but you can kind of get an idea. You see that? Kind of shows you a little bit of the rabbitness. Okay. This part right here, you see? There's no awesome click. That right there is the mole right there. But look, listen. It's just a slight click. And sometimes it's not there. That to me, I think it's just a little bit too much pushed in. Versus compared to this one, look at this time. You can see, I just take them off both. This is the way knockoffs used to do it. The hole was slightly smaller, but oh man, that hole, even though it's small, it latches on tight. This one right here, it also latches on pretty good. It's just not the same satisfying clip. Like, listen to this. Oh, again. Oh, oh yeah. It like, it makes you feel like, oh yeah, baby, this joint is tight in there. And like, secure, it's not gonna fall out or anything. Versus here? Doesn't really give me the confidence. 
I mean, it holds on tight. It just, it's just not the same in that sense. Like, once you have it, you play with it, you'll feel like, ooh, what happened to the difference? If you actually bought these older sets from before, you'll feel that difference. Overall, though, the color is slightly better. I just think this material for the legs just work better. I wish they kind of brought back that mold. It's just so damn good. However, one of the things I didn't like about the newer mold, this piece would oftentimes very easily fall out. Sometimes the torso was a little bit loose. Here, the torso is just right. There is no problem with the torso. The torso's in there tight like mwah, mwah. <laughs> Yes. Oh, and of course, last but not least, let's talk about the hand mold. And you can see, remember how the knuckles, they improved it and actually give you glove mold. Here, back in the old days, they just used the hand mold. So yeah, there was an actual improvement, you can also see the dots in there. Nice. This kind of gives you an idea of what the hands look like. Oh, and of course, let's do the test how the figures attach. And this figure attaches pretty well. This figure attaches pretty well. However, with this one, with the newer one, it's a little bit harder to stretch them out so they're three studs. They have a natural reclination to just go two like that. Which doesn't make it easy, so you have to constantly adjust, readjust. Ah, oh, shit. No, the battery's low. Damn it, fuck you. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna come, come back once the battery recharges. Fine, be that way. Now, for those who are wondering how well the figures stick, they stick roughly about the same. This right here is the old one. And here's the new one. The 2.0 version. Now it's time to do the crazy and friendly porcupine test. And the new, and the actually old one fell off. So yeah, the new one stuck on tight. Yay! And the new one will also fall off if you whack it hard enough. And just for the up close. Not bad. Just one thing about these figures. They get really tight like this. Versus this figure. Doesn't do that super tight thing. There isn't much difference about this figure, except that he has no eye application for the dots on his night vision goggle. There's nothing there. Ay ay ay. What? Just FYI with this gun grip, if you try to grip this gun with an official Call of Duty figure, it might snap the arm, but with a knockoff hands, that will not hit. These hands are a lot more durable to handle these type of uh, more rough type of knockoff guns. Anyway, zooming in closer, you can see no eye application there. Boo hoo hoo hoo. What? As the previous one actually had that eye application properly, you can see right there. As for the mold, nicely articulates, no problem here. Same exact body, so there's no difference in terms of the body. Ta -da -ta, ta -da -ta. All right, on to the next figure. His gun right here, just a solid gray metal speckled rocket launcher. And of course, this isn't so on you, so you can actually take this off. And put it back on. Just be a little careful to make sure the hole doesn't snap. Kinda. Ah, oh, well, fuck me. It's already snapped, you can kinda see that hole right there. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's one of the things to just be a little mindful with. You might want to be a little bit more careful. But it will hold. And yeah, the difference from the old one over here compared to the new one, there is no paint application for the figure. Now, if you look at the previous one, the paint application looked like he just smooshed toothpaste all over him, so it wasn't that great to begin with. I guess it's not that bad, it's not there. But you have an excellent head mold that you can now paint. It very easily articulates well. Head movement moves up and down. So yeah. On to the next figure. There isn't much difference about this figure except the head mold right here, which I can actually take off. You see this head mold? 
easily slides back on and out, but cool part is you can remove this if you don't want it. Now you get this cool pilot hit move. But what's interesting about the pieces, look how rubbery it is now. It is such a nice good rubber. Remember how this head mold was always a pain in the ass to remove? Well guess what? Since it's a lot more rubbery, it's now easy to remove and swap out. Look how nice and rubbery that is. Wow! This right here, when you make it rubbery like this, this right here is what I like. Mmm! So nice and rubbery. It's kind of crazy how rubbery it is. As to compare to this one right here, this is the old version, I'll remove that. I'm using the same amount of force to squeeze, it's a lot more harder. Mm. Versus here, same force. Mm. Mm. Just kind of gives you an idea, whoa, see, same force over here, Just this one's so much more nice, easier to attach. Damn, that is such a good change. Overall, with this excellent change, the head mode moves around so much better. This is such a good, like, playability change. So thank you, Knockouts, for updating this thing. This was always one of the things that was a pain in the butt. Also, for those wondering about the backpack, yes, those are also pegs on the back. And even with the backpack, it's a little bit loose, but it does function. And the key thing is, you see, the juggernaut and the chest mold over there. It has to properly align. So sometimes what you have to do, you have to push this down, hold it in place, and then attach backpack. So that way it goes through. <sighs> well, it's not going through. Get this, keep that kabam in place. Okay, you attach through the hole, and you get that down. There, boom. See, it has to attach into the blue coat, not just the juggernaut armor itself. And then it is attached third. So that's just like an FYI thing. If you get this set and you're like wondering, why the hell on the backpack attached? Now you know why. All right, on to the next figure. This is figure number five, Mr. Riot Gear. That's the gun he has. Nothing is detachable. Boo hoo hoo hoo. Something would be great if the knockoffs implemented. Moving up to the head mold over here. Oof. I guess the crowd didn't like him. You can see my head mold in particular has that in there. Here is just a regular SWAT one. You see? He doesn't have an indent like this guy. Now, personally, I think that's actually kind of cool. It's like someone got smacked. Like this guy got smacked with that uh, metal rod. Ouch. <laughs> yeah. Ah! So, cool thing is in stop motion, you can swap out this head mold, place it on that, and yeah. Also, another thing, even though they uh, didn't apply paint over here, I'm so glad they applied paint over here. Because that'd be kind of an epic fail. They had actually, Knuckles have done this specifically with this mold before. Gave it to us without a paint application. But I'm so glad that here they gave it. And you can see just up close, the difference in paint application, there really isn't a big difference. Just that indented head mold. Material wise, it is different. Here, very different material, they just started using a different plastic material. You see here, it's a bit more tighter versus here, look at this. It locks off very easily, like that. That's mainly the big difference between the material from the old ones and the new ones. Overall, both of them work. Alright, on to the next figure. Now, what's different about this one from the previous one? Well, for starters, the right shield right here is actually painted with blue text instead of black text. Overall, still the same quality, just a different color in that police look. And of course, how does it attach? Very nice. Check this out. Ooh, you see that little mold right there? That is okay. It's just more of an aesthetical problem. The knuckles, their plastic material is very fucking bearable. So it will handle all of this rough shit. Look at this. Mwah. 
No problem whatsoever with knockoff accessories and knockoff fix. It is very tight on that thing. But once it attaches, no problem. Moving up up front over here. The head mount here, I'll bring out the old one. Tuk tuk tuk. Here he is, you can kind of tell the difference. There is a slight difference in skin tone. You can see right there a bit more pronouncement. Uh huh. Also, based on the way the mold of the plastic is done, it makes you feel like this figure has a higher quality sunglasses since they are less shiny. You kind of see it has that different shine, and that's all thanks to the different type of plastic that they use. You can even see the plastic right on the head. See? Just the different material makes it a lot less shiny. Overall, they both work the same. However, one thing I liked about this piece right here, the scarf. Look how very nice and flexible that scarf piece is. Mmm, this is the old one right here. Now, if we do that with the new one, also flexible, but not as flexible. It is just slightly hard. Both of them work very well. You can kind of see, I apply the same pressure. They're roughly about the same, just this one's just very, very slight. You'll notice it once you have it, it's a different, uh, slight different uh, material. Mm -hmm. Overall, with the color, you can kind of just see the difference. Having it done in this type of color or material, it makes it just feel a lot more, what do you say, less shiny. So if you consider that an aesthetic plus, well, there it is. Overall, I'd say the, the improvements here are very good. And what about the hat? How easily does the hat remove? Ah, pretty easy, about the same as the other one. This kind of gives you an idea. Uh, so in that sense, knockoffs are improving. Oh, and just one more thing with this vest. Uh, they mostly fix the part where it really, really like badly scratches the vest mold. But it still can scratch slightly. You can see right there, it left those little tiny scratch marks. So just FYI with the vest, it still functions, it still does the job, but be a little bit careful, especially if you don't want the scratch. Although, it's kind of difficult to avoid the scratches when you put on the vest, it's just kind of FYI kind of. Alright, let's start talking about the accessories. Here are the accessories. There are quite a lot of... Oh, 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 wait, hold on. Forgot to show you how the accessories come in. Here's how the accessories come in with the bag. Okay. And essentially each figure gets a small one and a big one. I placed the accessories on the white paper, but essentially you get six of these classic ones that we already know and love. Don't worry, I went into full detail on these accessories in the previous video. I'm just not gonna waste your time here. And not only do you get six of these, but you also get six of these mini ones. These ones right here are more of the Call of Duty stuff, which I've also done extensively review in the previous SWAT review. We can actually do a slideshow real quick of all the instructions. Ooh, Chico. And that right there is the shotgun barrel. And you see, it has a problem. Because this right here is what it's supposed to look like. Not like that. Like that. Ooh. It wasn't supposed to be this way. Oh, man. Has that got to be a pretty badass way to set it up? <laughs> Everybody, it is final judgment time. <laughs> For the aesthetics, I give the aesthetics a 9 out of 10. I bumped it up because they removed the very plasticky aesthetic and made the figures look like they're actually wearing clothes. It's less shiny. And since they also removed the paint application that looked like toothpaste, it didn't really look that good. I mean, I wouldn't mind this point off because we get less detail, but then again, since they were already crappy from the get-go, I mean, they look like toothpaste, so <laughs> you do what you want. For the playability, I give this set an 8 out of 10, just one score down, I mean, overall the figures articulate well, even with your thing articulation, I think it's just the way the legs are attached. I miss that awesome pop that it used to have. Mwah! I think only other than that, 
everything else works very well, the accessories work very well. I might even, I was thinking about giving this set even a 9 out of 10 for playability, but I'm gonna stick with an 8 just because of that. Overall, excellent good life improvements. For the value, I give this set a 10 out of 10. Why? Because we actually now get all, all of these accessories back there. With all of their plates. Versus previously, I didn't get those accessories. Oh, and of course, because you also get two fucking care packages! It's the care package! <sighs> Buying fucking blonde every time! Like, damn, that is very valuable over there. And lastly, for the build, I give the build a 9 out of 10. The figures were a lot more easier to assemble. There wasn't no more of that really bad finger hell when you try to assemble. So that issue was mostly gone for the most part. Oh, and of course, the care package and sandbaggy attach a lot easier to studs. So yeah, they're getting close to Mega Bloks thing. Very close. And that brings us to the final score, which I give a 9 out of 10. It's an A. Overall, the knuckles just keep improving. There are some downsides where they took a step back, but on the most part, they keep improving. So you better watch out, Mega. So you better watch out, Mega. No, actually look back at the Call of Duty line, not ignore it for Halo. Looks like we really accomplished something for the greater good. <laughs> greater good? Police! So Mega, you better watch out, because the only ones who are in the game still making Call of Duty sets are Knuckles, and not you. That's not the way it should be. You should also be making these type of sets and whooping the Knuckles ass. Instead, the line just dies, slowly, painful, very sad death that it should not have died, and there's no hope in terms of, hey, maybe we'll come back, maybe we'll bring a cool military line instead using all the same modes. Mega's like, nah. And I never want to see it in our home again. We'll just let the knockoffs take over. And I really don't like that attitude. I wish Mega was also in the game. I don't know. Maybe Mega will start caring once knockoffs find out that we had a knockoff Halo. We got us a problem. Oh no. Now Mega's gonna be scared. Now Mega all of a sudden is gonna care. Wow. I only wish I could believe that. Well, my comrades, now's that time in the video where I ask you, what do you think about this set? Do you like how the knockoffs are improving? Do you like how Mega's not doing no more Call of Duty sets? Let me know in the comment section down below. Other than that, if you enjoyed this review, leave it a like and subscribe for more. And just before you go, one more thing that I wanted to say that was a bit more important is since there aren't going to be a lot of Call of Duty new crap of sets, knockoffs is going to be, I'm going to try to be doing a lot more knockoff reviews and other stuff, but let me know in the comment section what other type of videos or Mega Bloks would you like me to do. Other than that, my comrades, I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching and take care. Ooh, how about booby lady? What?